Hello, beautiful people of the interwebs! I got an Izzy. I got an Izzy. Ain't no pretty Izzy. Oh, she's an angry Izzy. <laughs> Look at that angry face. She's going to kill us all one day. So I just thought that I would uh, shoot another vlog, even though I know I just recently uploaded one. Because, well, I changed my hair again. It's very purple. There's very little black left in it. It's almost just completely purple now. I like it. But I never got to show it on camera because the day, like the evening, I think, that I got it done, I started getting sick and I've been sick for the past week. So today's about the first day that I feel well enough being on camera. I'm not really sure what Izzy is doing right now. She's sort of doing a weird half laying, half sitting thing. But she seems to be having a good time, for now, anyway. So she freaks out and screams at me and runs. So luckily, right before I got sick, I did uh, record some Skyrim like I said I was going to. So uh, even though I've sort of been out of commission, I still managed to render and upload a couple of Skyrim videos. And then while I was sick for a while, I couldn't really do anything, but then I was sick of not doing anything. Sick of being sick, I guess. So I decided to start up my own Darkest Dungeon save just for myself while I was sick and played quite a bit of Darkest Dungeon. It's amazing uh, how much better you do when you don't play the way that I choose to play in my live streams. Um, but I didn't want to play with the save that I'm using for the live stream because it has a bunch of, you know, characters, almost all the characters are named after people who come to the streams. And if they leveled up or they died, like it really wouldn't be fair. So I decided to create my own special save. But what I couldn't stand to, uh, to play anymore, I would just sort of hang out on the sofa with my laptop and watch a lot of Gophers Wasteland 2. Let's Play, which I had seen maybe the first 10 videos of before, Ooh. and for whatever reason then got distracted from it, never finished watching it. So I watched through video 20 while I was ill, and that got me interested in Wasteland 2 all over again, which I, I didn't own at the time, and I had never played. I'd only ever seen Gopher play it a little bit. And then finally this past weekend, when I was starting to feel better, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go out. I'm going to buy Wasteland 2, and I'm going to start a new game. Again, this past weekend, I spent almost all of my time streaming Wasteland 2. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, okay, bye. Sorry, I apologize for loving you. So much Izzy. All the Izzy. What was I saying? I started streaming Wasteland 2 when I was still feeling pretty sick, so I haven't been using a face cam on it, just audio commentary and just the game in full screen. And um, at first I thought, I'm not going to like this. I don't like not being able to express myself with my hands, for instance, or my facial expressions. Um, but actually, you know, there are good points and there are bad points, you know, face cam or no face cam. I usually prefer face cam. Um, partially because I don't hear particularly well, so I need to lip read a lot. I think I mentioned that before, so that's very useful uh, for me. But also people who talk with their hands, people who have a lot of facial expressions, you can see when they're smiling, even if they're not laughing, like, eh, it's a face cam for me really increases the entertainment value of what I'm watching. But from the other end, being the one doing the streaming, being the one having the camera pointed at you, you know, there are some good and some bad about having used a face cam all this time and then now suddenly not having it there. And I've kind of already mentioned the downside. People can't read your lips. People can't see your facial expressions. You can't use your hands to express yourself. You can't, you know, do one of those looks at the camera just like... Especially when like a character in game is going on and on and on and on and on. You can't really interrupt them to say anything. So you would just interact with the camera directly, but you can't because it's off. So that's kind of one of the bad things. But then there are a lot of really good things too. For instance, I kind of have resting bitch face and I don't have to worry about keeping that in check. And that might not sound like a problem, but if you're just sort of moving from one place to another, you're not particularly focused on a, a particular task and you're just sort of 
you're sort of in that moment of the game where not a lot is going on and you're just moving to the next thing, you tend to default to your resting face. And uh, you know, you don't really want to walk in on a live stream and you see a face cam with someone with resting bitch face. It's just like, oh, somebody's pissed off, I'm gonna go. There's also um, the awesome bit of not having to worry about my hair and what my headset's doing to it. The vanity side sort of works in. And also, this is actually not, oddly enough, not the vanity side, but um, I can't wear my glasses when I live stream or when I record because they're very reflective of things like TV screens and computer screens and like the light that I have over here. Um, so I've tried to record before with it and it's just, they're sort of um, rectangles over my eyes and it's just white. It's just white reflected light. You'd be blinded, you wouldn't be able to see the look in my eyes, like it'd be completely pointless. So I always have to wear my contacts when I stream or when I record and I have them in all day. So by the time it's, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night, and I'm trying to stream or something, they, they're starting to get dry. So I'm doing a lot of extra blinking and sort of rolling my eyes and doing this stuff. And it actually doesn't really bother me that much because um, I'm used to, you know, at the end of your night, of your night the, the contacts start to get dry. That's just the way it is. But on camera, it sort of looks like there's something really wrong and it's uncomfortable for other people to watch. So if my contacts are dry, I don't have to worry about that. And I, I can wear my glasses which I was wearing the whole time I was really sick anyway because my eyes hurt so much I couldn't put contacts in from just being like itchy and watering and stuff. All weekend while I was streaming Wasteland 2, in the gate glasses, just in case you thought I was making it up. Jesus. I think I might be blind now. Fuck. And the other thing that I sort of actually hadn't thought about until I was well into the streaming without a face cam is constantly having to make sure that you're centered or that you at least can be seen because I don't have like all of this extra crap on the, on the sides that's gone. And I'm just sort of, you know, it's a square of just basically my face and like maybe my from the collarbone up basically, right? It's really easy if I'm like leaning or if my chair starts to turn or I start to relax a little bit while I'm playing the game um, to sort of get off camera. So you constantly have to be aware of that. Not having the face cam, I can do this. I can be up in my chair like this. I can do whatever I want. I'm starting to see the appeal of the non face cam streaming and or recording, which is probably a really weird way to do things to be the person who's only ever use a face cam for like over a year of streaming and, and doing Let's Plays and suddenly was like, you know, maybe I'll try not using a face cam for a little while. But don't worry, it's not like the face cam isn't going to disappear from anything that currently has a face cam. I would never do that unless like it broke and I couldn't possibly get in a replacement or something. So that's not happening. It's just that even though I'm feeling better now and I'm planning on streaming some more Wasteland 2 tonight, I've kind of decided I'm going to let Wasteland 2 be my no face cam um, streamed game. I like the idea of that particular game being in full screen because there's a lot of stuff happening on the screen. A lot of it's kind of small. It's a very fiddly game. There's a lot of inventory management. I wouldn't really be sure where to put a face cam anyway. That's pretty much decided. Wasteland 2 is going to be my no face cam thing. Consider it an experiment or, you know, just something for me to do when I'm not feeling face cam ready, which I'll be honest is most days. Mail's here. It kind of occurs to me that I sort of only shoot one of these vlogs when I'm addicted to a new game so that I can tell you about it. Is this just a series of vlogs about how fickle I am? <laughs> you see that? You're probably thinking, ew, her fingernails are so dirty. Oh my God, why doesn't she wash them? That is not dirt under my nails, people. That is hair dye. My fingernails, without me having to paint them, are just fucking purple. So here's what they never tell you on like Pinterest or Google image search when you think that having purple hair or blue hair or some other crazy color of hair is gonna be super cool. You look it up and you find all these like super amazing pictures and everybody just looks great. Something about, and I don't know what it is, I'm not a hairologist, but something about the funky colors, even when they're supposed to be permanent, 
they're not really permanent. They're not anywhere near as permanent as getting your hair dyed a different shade of brown or black or a darker blonde or a, a more natural red. These funky colors are never really permanent. If I go six weeks, six weeks without getting the entire thing re-dyed, I end up with a bunch of places where I have blonde ends, or in some cases it actually will turn just white, even though I don't think it was ever bleached out all the way to white, so I'm not really sure how that works out. And that is when I take like all the precautions. Precautions, you might say? Why would you need to take precautions with your hair color? Warm shower water is not allowed on my head. When you have crazy bright hair color, you have to wash your hair in cold or cool, preferably cold, water, or else it'll just strip right out. You take a hot shower, you put your crazy purple hair under the hot shower, you don't have crazy purple hair anymore. You better get your ass back to the stylist and get it redone because permanent doesn't really mean permanent when your hair is purple. Except for some reason on your fucking fingernails. Because I scrub and I scrub and I scrub. I use all kinds of soaps. I have like nail brushes and I'm just scrubbing and I'm scrubbing and it doesn't matter. I can't get it off completely. No matter how hot the water is that I use. If I did the same thing to my hair that I did to my nails, I would be blonde right now. You know what you never see pictures of on Pinterest when you're looking up how great purple hair is? People's bathtubs! I can guarantee you that when I moved in here, the place did not come with a funky purple bathtub. It has one now. Or how about when you first get back from the stylist, the purple ears that you're sporting for the first four days. The fact that every towel in my house has a big purple splotch in the middle of it. When you are in the shower and you've got the cold on and you're freezing your butt off just so that you can wash your hair or rinse out your hair. You know that your fingernails are turning purple. You know that the tub is turning purple. Well, guess what? Everything in between is turning purple too. You're getting purple all over your shoulders, down your back, all over your face. When I get out of the shower after washing my hair, I have to put it back, go to the sink, get a rag with like some serious soap and scrub the purple off my fucking face or I look like a smurf. You learn your lesson on the smurf look like the first time around. So the next time you come back from the stylist with your purple hair and you know it's time to finally wash your hair, which by the way, you haven't done for like as long as you could possibly stand it since you got back from the stylist because the longer you go without washing it, the longer it will actually last. So you find yourself kneeling in the shower with like your head forward and just sort of you're just sort of hanging there, trying to get your head out as far from the rest of your body as is humanly possible, and to get as close to the bottom of the tub as you can possibly get so that you're not splashing purple water up all <laughs> About the only way you could get around it is if you have like a stainless steel sink that has a sprayer and it has enough water pressure in there that you would be able to wash your hair with that, and like get out conditioner and stuff, and then maybe if you, if you got in the, if you were like backwards in the sink, I think you'd need somebody else to help you. Basically, you need to bring your stylist home with you and get a stainless steel sink for her to wash your hair in. But don't worry, she won't have to be there more than once a week because if you wash your hair more than once a week, you're gonna be back to that stylist really fast. And those touch-ups, they are not cheap, let me tell you. And while we're on the subject of washing and conditioning our hair, if you think that you're gonna go into the nearest drugstore and pick up something that says on it, oh, safe for color-treated hair, which by the way, like 90% of shampoo says now, you're wrong. Even the good stuff, even the stuff that the stylist will give you as a sample or try to sell to you that is supposed to be super, super safe and super, super great for color-treated hair, it does not work on hair that has funky colors. It will strip it out just as sure as some suave crap that you picked up at the grocery store because you suddenly realized that you were out of shampoo when you were picking up your noodles. 
you have to go and find some super special secret shampoo that nobody's ever heard of except for the crazy, funky hair dye community because apparently there is one. They're all over the internet. I guess I'm one of them now, except I don't post about it, except I'm doing this vlog. Oh my God, I guess I am one of them now. But anyway, you have to find like a super special shampoo that the whole community has like tested and everybody's said whether or not it's it's made it strip out and how long it's take and if it if it helps the hair color last a month it's like phew, five stars I man my hair color lasted a whole month and if you're lucky you might be able to find like five or six different shampoos that have passed this test and most of them are incredibly expensive the one that everybody says is absolutely the best for funky colored hair that you should totally get if you possibly can. It comes in like this teeny tiny bottle and it's like $65. And you're supposed to use just this teeny tiny little amount. I don't even know how you would get that in your, I have short hair, like really short hair. And I don't even know how I would manage to spread that across all of my hair, much less somebody who has like, like the long hair with the umbra. I'm lucky I managed to find one that's like supposedly in the top six or something and it usually costs about three times more than what I paid for it because I managed to find it on clearance. But God's help me when I run out of this stuff because I don't know where I'm going to get it again. Even with that, I need to try to not wash my hair more than once a week, preferably less. And in between, I just get my head under a cold faucet and just with no soap and my hands turn purple and uh. and you might think well why don't you just get gloves and then when you wash your hair or when you rinse your hair and you have the gloves on then your hands won't turn purple that's a great idea except that your hands will turn purple whenever you have to touch your hair for basically any reason so once my hair is dry and I'm styling it I have to get like you can't really style your hair with gloves on it's gonna be a problem with the different products you're gonna put in your hair you have to really have your hands in there and your hands will get purple just from styling your hair if your hair is out of place in the middle of the day and you're messing around with it your hands are gonna turn purple I am surprised by now that my cat has not turned purple as I'm explaining this you're probably thinking oh my god all she's doing is bitching and complaining about how difficult it is to take care of purple hair why don't you just not have purple hair and I'll tell you why because it's awesome is it a huge pain in the ass yes it absolutely is is it way too fucking expensive for something that you really don't need in your life yes it fucking is but it's super awesome I love my hair I love like getting ready to go back to the stylist to change it and trying to decide what I want to do do I want to add color do I want to take color away do I want it shorter do I want it in a slightly different style with like different strips of different colors going through like what do I want to do next like I love that it's it's very creative without having to have any skill and I really don't have any kind of like beautician type skill like I'm not good at doing nails I'm not particularly good at doing hair like this is about the best I can do and it's kind of flat in some places but I can have an image in my head of what I want to do and have somebody who does have some skill talk me through it and actually achieve it. So that's pretty cool. You definitely get to show off some of your individuality no matter what you're doing and no matter where you are. Even, you know, if you work in an office environment, you have to wear office clothes or whatever, a suit or something like that. So you can't really express yourself with like your crazy t-shirts and things. If you have crazy colored hair or, you know, a crazy haircut or I guess a facial tattoo, would work as well you're still able to show off some individuality and express yourself even when you're sort of like buttoned down for your office job this is assuming that you don't work for a bunch of jerks who wouldn't let you have purple hair or a face tattoo I am not in any shape or form suggesting you get a face tattoo I would recommend purple hair that was a tangent Anyway, so yes, I just thought that I would shoot another vlog since I'm starting to feel a whole lot better and there's just this teeny tiny bit of cold hang on like in the back, but it's basically gone. Like it's been defeated. It knows that the war is over and it's just sort of dragging its feet on the way out of the country. So I thought it was a, a good time to shoot another vlog. And plus, I, you know, I'm starting to learn. I'm, I've been uploading videos on YouTube for over a year. I don't know really how long I've been streaming. Um, 
I, I think maybe only four or five months have I actually been streaming, but I'm, I'm starting to realize that the way that I've done things in the past have kind of been detrimental to me and detrimental to me continuing to provide content at a reasonable rate. And one of those things that I always do is when I shoot a vlog, uh, I immediately go into editing it. And while shooting a vlog might only take me half an hour, uh, editing it, rendering it, checking it, editing it again, rendering it again, checking it again, eventually uploading it, that can take two and a half hours. So what that's meant is that shooting a vlog becomes this, this all night thing, this super intensive process. And I think that actually makes me do them less often. So this will be the second time uh, in a row that I have shot a vlog, but I'm not going to immediately edit it. In fact, I'm not going to edit it tonight. I think I will probably edit it tomorrow night because tonight I would like to stream some Wasteland 2. Oh my god, this vlog is almost over and I never did the thing. I never did the thing because I had Izzy in my arms like the whole beginning of the thing. And then when she was gone, I didn't even think about the thing. And now I just remembered I never did the thing. This has been my 13th attempt. At a vlog. How was that? Was that okay? Was that weird? Having it at the end of the vlog is definitely weird. We shouldn't do that again. I still have some Skyrim to uh, edit, render, and upload. I still have some Dragon Age, actually, that's older than the Skyrim, uh, which I really should do first. Uh, I think actually the next video I upload after this vlog is, is going to be a Dragon Age because I still have my old hairdo my old, old hair, like this is my new hairdo. And then in a Skyrim that I haven't rendered yet, that's my old hairdo. But then the Dragon Age is my old, old hairdo, which I realized means that they were all probably shot within like three weeks of each other. <laughs> yeah, I should really, I should really do the Dragon Age next. So that should be the next video or maybe two videos that you get. And then another Skyrim or maybe two Skyrims. And then, uh, and then I need to record more. So yes, more content on its way. Uh, if you like Wasteland 2 and you don't mind not seeing the money, I hope to see you over at the stream. I'll put a link below as I always do. I'll also put a link to my Twitter. I've been really lax in letting people know on Twitch actually that Twitch is not very consistent in sending out streaming notifications to people who follow streamers and have requested to get streaming notifications. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. And I have had weeks where every single time I stream, an alert goes out and I think, oh, they fixed it, it's good. And then I've had other weeks where every single time I streamed, they didn't send an alert at all and no one got one. And not just that people are telling me they didn't get them, but I actually have a mod account that is followed or subscribed to my Twitch account so that I can see when the notifications go out and when they don't, so I myself and sometimes getting them and sometimes not getting them. So I've been really lax in letting people know that on my Twitter account, when I see that Twitch hasn't sent out a notification, I manually tweet that I am streaming. So Twitter is the one place where if you actually use Twitter and you pay attention to your feed on a regular basis, that you will always know whether or not I am streaming. So if you're finding that you're having problems being notified uh, when I'm streaming, if, if you do follow me there and if you're into watching live streams, um, then if you do use Twitter, following me there might be a solution for you in the interim until Twitch figures out how to always send out notifications instead of just sometimes. Thanks for watching. I know this vlog went all over the place. It definitely went to some places I didn't intend for it to go to. Hopefully I will see you around soon and I hope that you have a good night. Bye.